This is HCM Productions on location. We're here at Cuts and Stuff. I'm Fox. Along with you is my partner, Scott Reynolds, Joseph Robinson Ill, and Anthony Actif. And the topic today in the shop talk is a very sensitive, yet a very realistic issue in which we deal with each and every day. It's about black men here in America. Uh, Robinson Hill, now please have your insights on how progress has really shown and proved within your walk, your way of life. Let me come over to you. Thank you. What is like in being a black man in America? Joe Robinson Hill. Well, Fox, you know how I feel when it comes to topics like this here because coming up how we came up in the family structure, one of the things that has been disheartening to me is how our community have gotten away from us. Um, the social ills that exist in the community today, how we've been, um, the family has just been dispersed. And um, I think that's one of the things that all of us can speak on. You know, I was on my way here today, Fox, and uh, as I was catching the public transportation, I noticed how some of the seniors asked me, excuse me, son, are you from here? Just because I made sure that we as men made sure that our seniors got on the bus first. You know? And that's one of the things that we've gotten away from, the basics. The basics. Um, they say that the generation gap between the older guys, which they, with the, which, uh, how they compare us with the younger, there is no generation gap because the same thing Young um, youngsters are going through now. We went through the same thing, you know. And uh, I would like to see how we feel about that. The men in the shop. Okay. Thank you. Well spoken. Well said. Uh, Brother Scott Reynolds, would you like to? Uh, on the subject of being a black man in America. Uh, well, I've been on this earth here for past 66 years now and uh, I can only speak from my experience with being here. Uh, I've read and heard about a lot of different prejudices in this country but I myself haven't experienced what I have read and seen you know but I myself uh, uh, as far as being a black man here I, I'm very concerned about uh, our young men today you know that's coming up and they're, they're losing their lives, you know, and they're not giving themselves a chance to, uh, to even find out what the country's all about, what America's about, man, because they're getting knocked off so fast amongst themselves, you know? And, uh, and it's a shame, you know? It's not like the old days when I was coming up, you know? Uh, you know, we get into an altercation with somebody, man, you know, we do our thing, and we friends again, you know? Today, these kids, man, you know, they don't know, they don't know what life is all about, you know? They take it, they take a grudge, man, they carry it to the end, you know, for no reason at all. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, man, uh, uh, I mean, for me, life has been good, you know, as a black man in this country. You know, like I said, I haven't experienced none of the difficulties that some other black men have experienced in this country. I myself feel that, uh, you know, I have lived my life, you know. And, and, <laughs> You know, I live my life, man, pretty, pretty, pretty fair, you know. Well spoken. Truly appreciate that very important information. How are you, young man? I can definitely feel what he's saying. Um, I'm only 21, so, you know, I, I guess I can say I got the best of both worlds, a little bit of knowledge plus a young man. But um, the way I feel is a lot of people, it's basically it's your environment that breeds you, but it's also how you carry yourself. Um, a lot of stuff I see, I can't really say I can relate to, but I can see where they're coming from. But most of the stuff that happens out here is basically because they put themselves in their own situation. Yeah. It's all dependent on your decisions, what you do, how you carry yourself. And you give respect, you're going to get it. Simple as that. And on that note, I would like to add the fact that how the family itself, as people, as a nation, it's never divided where people tend to divide or separate themselves. 
In fact, you can have a situation that will trickle down into your family members, your mother, her mother, your daughters, your son, your grandkids. And there's no such thing that it's no effect there. I mean, what positiveness I do, the rewards are always honored to those of your family tree. And the same must apply for the north that you as an individual would ever have to experience and go through in life. But out of all the wrongdoings, you can always and better see a clearer day. Let me move on. Thank you. Real short and clear, this is my experience. I've been through a lot of racism, but I learned how to ignore it. Racism to me is really number stupidity. I learned how to ignore it. So I'm gonna keep it short. That's my that's my opinion. So that's all I have to say. How about you, my brother? No comment? I got you anyway, because you are young. You are our future. You are our reason for even having this production in here today. Trust me, okay? Thank you very much anyway. All right. My brother Raymond. Thank you. What I think of a black man in America. Yes. Um, I, I actually feel what everybody in here has already shared. And um, as Scott Reynolds had made mention, it's really only what we make it ourselves. It doesn't take a government it doesn't take um, an individual to have to tell you what you have to do to be successful within this country. It just takes the motivation. And if given the opportunity, which I see an awful lot here in America, that one takes advantage of it. And in taking advantage of opportunities, that's how one tends to progress along the way. Trials and tribulations are faced by everybody. Nobody, not no one, can get around trials and tribulations. But what we must do in experiencing the day-for-day -day activities along with our new challenges through trial and tribulation, we must be open, be acceptive, and be willing enough to want to take it to another level. We tend, as black men, to make a lot of excuses when there should not be excuses. Opportunity override excuses, but one must be willing, one must really want it within his heart, his soul, his body, for him his family, family members, and loved ones to really give it an opportunity to be what they may foresee within their future. One of the things that I've learned in being a black man in America is that you must first have a plan in order to take it to another level. Without a plan, you're stagnated, and to seek the help, the assistance and aid that this country will afford you, one must really take the advantage of what's being offered to them, wherever you're at, whether it be Washington, D.C., New York, China, or wherever. It's about taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, I was... Um have a very, very deep um, feeling about how our communities have, I don't want to use the word destroyed, but how we've gotten away from the respect, the morals, and the values. And I want to blame myself for taking a part of that diabolical disease. You know, because due to the marriage social ills that exist in our community today, and having contributed to the social unrest, I had to make a conscious decision to say I was tired of being tired and stop pointing the finger. Because when I point that finger, that thumb is pointing back at me. So what I do now is ask myself, what can I do 
or what am I doing to make it better? You see, as of May the 9th this month, I've just returned home from this journey called incarceration. And in this journey, I made a constant decision to understand that I had to stop, I had to get out the way and let God come into my life. See, see, if you get out the way, God will show you. But it's a process. It's a process. So first I had to stop beating up on myself and allow the healing process to take its course, to take the advantage of the programs. And if there wasn't anything going on, then I had to do something productive. So all over the country now, we have so many fathers, so many brothers, so many uncles coming home now to the communities, not the streets, but returning to our communities. And I asked myself, what are we going to do with this opportunity? You know, the first thing that I had to do is to sit down, shut up, and understand that I'm not running anything. You see, because when I left, my daughter was five. She's 25. My son was 13. He's 35 now, you see. And this whole reentry process has allowed me to grow up and be a man because I didn't know what it was to be a father. I had to learn, you know. And as I took a, 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 a very, very sensitive but heartfelt inventory of my surroundings behind those barbed wire fences, I felt that there were a lot of men, a lot of men who felt the same way I did. You know, so, um, and then the families. The families have been broken apart because there's so many men behind the barbed wire fences. But by the grace of God, we're on our way home now. Now, what are you going to do with that, Joseph Robson Hill? What am I going to do? This is what I ask myself. What am I going to do this? First of all, I had to understand that my children had to learn daddy all over again. They had to learn daddy all over again. I've been gone a long time. My sisters, my nieces, and my community. You know? But um, this is a very, very deep, deep, heartfelt issue that we have to ask ourselves. You know? And that's just something that I would like to throw to the family here. I would just like to put that on the plate. Put that on the plate and see what do we have to offer. Thank you so much, Brother Robinson Hill. Thank you, Father. It's beautiful, beautiful like illustration, brother. Yes, sir. What is it? But I would like to ask you a question. What is it that cuts and stuff brings to this community? Cuts and stuff brings the forgotten. It brings the black man from never to up. Cuts and stuff brings the attention, the focus back to the women who are the torch carriers in replacing the black men who has been cut short, knocked down, pushed around. So the women and the children, we bring support. We bring back to them what they truly need, which is strength and endurance. These services come by way of hair, care, skin, fingernails, just basically being concerned about a community who has unfortunately lost out on a great deal, which is rightfully theirs. It's called civilization. And with that, I would like to share the microphone with the brothers assisting me in this conference. Thank you very much. First, I'd like to applaud the brother for his, his very, very prolific dialogue. It's a much needed dialogue. I often say or use the term that we need to have real conversations. Conversations that redefine us and what we perceive about manhood in this day and time. See, for a very long time, a lot of us walked around with 20 and 30 and 40 years with messed up concepts about what we thought manhood represented. That's right. But in order for us to be successful today as men, we got to reinvent ourselves and have a greater vision of what our manhood means to us today. I'm talking about in the sense of being responsible men to ourselves first, to our families, 
to what God means in each and every one of our lives and to our community. Because we are an extension of our community, whether we like it or not. But in the past, a lot of us has been a negative influence in our communities. But today, I think that as positive men or thinking men, we can be a motivating force in our communities today. And we will see that the community can only grow from our distinction of our thoughts, our collective thoughts, not individual thoughts. See, we've been divided by separation because we basically think about it on only and of ourselves mm. and thinking that we're the only ones in the community or in our, in, in our hood. But see, we got to represent the community at large. And I think as men today, I try to myself, I try to think more responsible. I try to think more of a father. I try to think more of a son. I try to think more of a brother, as an uncle, as a nephew, etc. cetera. And, and, and I'm trying to cover all bases because the extent of manhood, it, it don't really have no limitations. But I know that, for the most part, I always focus on for care and responsibility. And love, too. Because what we see in our communities today basically is a product of hatred. But see, love can supersede all of that. See, it's all right for me today to say, brother, I love you. And, hu and hug the brother. And that's what I mean. But see, in past, when we got those pores and thought in our mind, we said, man, I, you know, that's soft. But now love is not soft, because love just expresses how you feel about another, someone who's supposed to be dear to your heart. I, I ain't talking about picking up a gun and putting it to somebody's head that you love. I ain't talking about that, because that's hatred. That's hatred in its harshest form. But as men, I want us to try to come together, even if we disagree, we can still come to a conclusion of what should be done, because for the most part, all of us do not think alike. But we all have a measure through which we can contribute in the building of our communities. Economics is essential in all of our communities, if we are to prosper and grow. You know, and I just wanted to, for us to uh, 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 leave here to, this evening and vibe off of that. You know, and, and try to redefine ourselves, and for some of us, that been walking that road, I'm talking about that prison life, man, we got to move away from that. Because our youngsters today are being brought up by youngsters and by the streets. They're not being brought up by strong father figures, by strong big brother figures. They're being brought up by other people with weak minds that's of their surroundings. So, man, look, if we don't do it for ourselves, let's just do it for the youth. Well spoken. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Well spoken, my brother. My brother Bay. Rick. Ah, man. That's enough motivation there to get me started. So let's get some more good stuff from another great speaker, Jefferson Bay. Hello. Uh, I don't do a lot of talking. I do a lot of doing. And uh, in doing, what I do is is I'm represented by some of the youth that I work with, both of them. One is here, he's tired, he's kind of sleepy, he has a full day. But I have another one who, who is uh, Tavon. I work with these youth on a day-to-day -day basis, and I work in a group home with them. And what I try to give them is exactly what the brothers are talking about in terms of one-on-one -on -one counseling, in terms of a positive role model, in terms of a positive image and what a man is and how a man can care about a child. I try to, I can't be their fathers, but I try to be their father figure in the house that I'm working in. I'm the house manager, and uh, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is work with youth because what I'm interested in, as Mr. Robinson Neal and the rest of the brothers are talking about, is breaking that vicious cycle. That vicious cycle is, that vicious cycle of, a man coming home, not getting involved in his community, not being involved 
with the youth in this community, his brothers, his younger brothers, the rest of the youth in the community, not giving them a positive role image and not going back, not being recycled back into the system as a failure. Because for us, at this stage of our lives, failure is not an option. This represents our future. These youth represents us in the future. If we give them a little more to go on as role models, positive role models, with positive output in the community, they in turn recycle that same attitude and behavior in the community themselves. So I try to live it more than talk it because it's not in the walk totally, it's in the talk. It's in your words, your acts, and your deeds. And my deeds today is characterized for the youth in the community. This is what I'm about. This is why I affiliated myself with the business like cuts and stuff, because these are positive images. These are positive role models. These are brothers who have actually taken a position and have committed themselves to making a change, not only for themselves in themselves, but in the community that they find themselves in. And this is what I'm about. Thank you, and I appreciate this opportunity, and I am definitely committed to not only cuts and stuff, but I'm committed to my community too making a change, breaking the cycle. Much love, my brother. That is well said, babe. I mean, now, if I may, I'd like to introduce my brother Raymond to the chair for a moment there. Let him continue that topic. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you. Yes. Um, uh, everything what's been said, I, I can only just build on it. Um, basically, you know, um, what these brothers have said is nothing but the truth, and um, that's what we strictly got to be about today. As Brother Jeff just shared, it's not about a lot of talk, a lot of um, form and fashion. It's, it's about living it. It's about doing it so these kids can really have somebody to say that they can do it because he did it. And it's got to be in a positive type sense rather than a negative type sense. As Brother Rick had even spoke himself, Brother Rick made mention of the fact that, you know, it's, it's really not about us in a sense. It's about the youths out here. It's about making a way for them and giving them some form of understanding and doing things that need to be done so that we can stop them from having to take those short trips away from home or being away from their family members and loved ones. It's a lot of work to be done here. And cuts and stuff is a very, very small individual within the community. But what we are attempting to do, we are actually attempting to formulate and formalize different arms that can reach out to these kids. These kids need things done for them that we can't actually sit here and say that we can accommodate them for everything. So we need support. We need community support. We need, as Jeff said, not nobody just talking it. We need somebody to step up to the plate and actually be ready to do some things to make a better way for these kids as well as these seniors. Other brother has spoke about the seniors that had asked him today, was he from another place? And that was based on the fact that they're not getting the respect that's due them. And that's some of the things that we really need to look at and try to build on. These seniors are being forgotten about. We need, we need any and everything or any and everybody that has a service that they're willing to do. In a, on a volunteer basis. Everything is not about the dollar. We got to do things for love. And as a lot of the brothers have sit here and shared, a lot of the things that we're doing now, it's not because we're being paid for it, it's because we're giving back. And giving back is what a lot of us are about now. And in doing it in a positive way, that's what we truly think that we need to do as well as others need to do to try to save the lives of some of these youths. 
the killing rate. I can speak on in Washington, D.C. and the metropolitan area is, is off the handle. And it's nothing that I can sit here and actually say nor do to say that it will stop. But I know within myself that I will do everything within my beings to try to make sure that things like that don't happen. And if it takes for me to be with a youth, to be with a senior, to hook them up, to make things positive happen, then that's what I'll do. And I'm just thankful to God Almighty that we're here to aid and assist not only this community, but all communities in providing a service as well as anything that we can do to assist. This has been great. Can you say that? I certainly agree. We've had cuts and stuff. HCM Productions on location. I'm Fox. This is my brother Ray.